Hey, Ronnie. What's up, bro? Are you Scooby Snacks? <laughs> no, I don't have any Snoopy, Scooby Snacks. Uh, today on the program, we're talking dogs. Uh-huh. We're dog people. We are dog people. <laughs> yeah, we really I are. I love me some dogs. I do oh. too. Today, we're going to be talking about the 35 best large dog breeds. That's next on Men Are So Smart. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. And we are dog people. We yeah. admittedly tell you that. Uh, we've done several episodes on dogs and we stumbled across this article on the best large dog breeds. And these are not in any necessary order. Uh, we're just suggesting that these are some of the best. For instance, Basset Hound. As total couch potatoes, Basset Hounds love to lounge around. Kind of like you, Ron. Yeah. And when they're not on a scent, that is. Uh, bonus, they're extremely patient with young children, making them a great family pick, and I love their ears. Oh, boy. They could trip over them. I love those yeah. ears. Yep. Uh, the next one, Old English Sheepdog. They're beautiful. They are. Uh, all that fur insulates these herders uh, for their duties out on the farm. But just imagine how cuddly a sweet fluff ball would be. Yeah. Old English Sheepdogs are known for their gentle, agreeable nature and love a mellow day at the house after a long walk. I really think, uh, you know where that dog is from? Dennis and Menace. Oh, that's right. Had a, had Mr. Old Wilson! English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, every time I see one of those, that's what I think of. Big dogs. We've got a whole list of them today. Chinese Sharpe, behind all those wrinkles, and aren't they cute, is an excellent watchdog and a devoted family member. That said, Sharpe's stay suspicious of strangers and other dogs, prizing loyalty above all else. Yep. Uh, this uh, Afghan. So these Afghan hounds are sweet and silly, uh, endearing hounds originated in the mountainous region of Afghanistan. Their silky fine coat served as protection from the cold at high altitudes and requires plenty of grooming. We had some friends that had one and they had white carpet and it was perfect because you could not see all the fur that this dog dumped. And they dumped, <laughs> Which was about four inches. They dump a lot of fur. You better have a, a Dyson animal vacuum cleaner <laughs> and be prepared to use it daily. Are you trying to get some kind of Dyson endorsement <laughs> over there? What are you doing? Best large dog breeds, Alaskan Malamute. By nature, Malamutes are friendly toward humans, but quarrelsome among other dogs. They tend to be stubborn and are not easily trained, and they prefer to be outdoors. It's in their nature. Uh, this next one, I'm going to let you do that one because that's you, but next one up for, for that I have on my list is the Belgian Malinois. Now, these dogs, think of a German Shepherd. That's what I see in the picture. But a little bit more, they're sleeker, uh, they're faster, and they're athletic. They are basically the Tasmanian devil oh, wow. of the dog world. Huh. world. They never stop moving. Do you see any of those at the shelter? Uh, every once in a while, really? we do see them. But where they are very prevalent, uh, police work, uh, military, they are, they've really kind of taken over the German Shepherd as the most most used dog on, on those in, for working lines. Huh. Uh, they don't seem to have as many hip issues as German Shepherds. Ah. Um, and the combination of they're so much faster. German Shepherds are probably have 20 pounds on these dogs. A German Shepherd might go like 75 pounds. Uh, a Belgian Malinois might be 45 to 55 pounds. Huh. They are so much faster that the physics works out exactly the same when they hit somebody at that speed. Same effect as a 75 pound dog You're hitting going them. down anyway. Yep. Uh, they, <laughs> but they need tons and tons of exercise do not get yourself a malinois if you don't have time to run that dog and uh and exercise its brain yeah and not just walk it around the house that ain't gonna do it next up an american staffordshire terrier a pit bull people oriented amstaffs are both intelligent guardians and natural clowns they can be a bit strong-headed and do best when they're made part of the family now i have one um, stubborn? Oh no, that's not the word. They the dog just ignores me. 
you know, and I think I've told this story before. My wife and I are out in the garage with the dog, um, and she starts to go towards the outside. I'll, I'll say to her, Bell, 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 get back here. Nothing. Mom says, Bell, come here. The dog comes. <laughs> Who's feeding the dog more often? Mom. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So, uh, this, you know what? I'm not going to change your mind, nor am I going to try to change your mind on pit bulls. If you believe they're terrible animals, that's fine. If you don't believe it when they say it's how they're brought up, that's fine too. All I can tell you is about my personal experience, and that is this dog is the perfect family dog. It, um, it loves my dog. She is so patient with our three-year-old grandchild. The, the boy can do anything to the dog. The dog just loves him so much. Yeah. And they're very um, possessive. They're, they're tr they truly are, and they're also territorial. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and that's the A lot of big part. dogs are, though. Mm -hmm. My German Shepherd is extremely territorial. I will tell you this, though. Uh, so I volunteer one day a week at, uh, it's called the Front Street Animal Shelter. And I work with dogs there. And uh, from my background, working with police dogs. So it was kind of a natural fit. But our shelter is about 80% pit bulls. Yeah, it's, and why do you think that is, Ronnie? You know what? I think people sometimes bite off more than they can chew, and they just end up dumping the dog. Uh, every every one of them down there that I've, because we, we have paperwork on how they arrive at the at the shelter, mm -hmm. uh, they're strays. So it's not like somebody said, you know, they take the dog to the shelter and go, it's too much, or it's. You know, it's not a good family dog. Or they just drop them somewhere. They just leave them somewhere and leave them out to their own resources. And those dogs are going to get in trouble and oh, yeah. when they get hungry. So, oh, of course. You know, if you don't think you have... And you know what? Maybe a big dog isn't for everybody. Right. So, um, I mean, be careful. I always tell people, make sure you choose wisely, that you're choosing a dog that reflects your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. If you're so, sediment... Right. You know, then you probably want something. My my kids, uh, my daughter and her husband, they got a uh, a bulldog, and bulldogs have brief bursts of energy, followed by long Nap. snoring yeah. naps. Uh huh. Yep. That's my my pit bull too. Yep. All right, this next one, and I can speak to this one. Uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, beautiful dog. So my Buster that we adopted from a shelter, or excuse me, from a rescue, we had, we adopted him from a lab rescue, but he didn't look like he was all lab. And so my daughter got us a doggy DNA kit. We oh sent it God. in, and Buster is half lab and half Chesapeake Bay Retriever. And they're very similar looking. Chesapeake's have more of a wavy, curly coat, which Buster has, although he's completely black, so he looks like a gigantic black lab. Chesapeake's are also bigger and taller and not quite as sausage shaped. Most labs, it's they're they're the same size from the chest all the way back to their stomach. Uh, the one downside to Chesapeake's is they're a little bit aloof. Of meeting new people they're not crazy about everybody mm -hmm. so uh, you have to take that in consideration and labs in Chesapeake they, they make a pretty good mix I kind of wish we would have got more lab and less Chesapeake with Buster but hey with a rescue you kind of you take what you get next up is Collies they exhibit the qualities of loyalty intelligence and gentleness and live up to their hero reputation from Lassie. <laughs> Is Timmy in the freaking well again? <laughs> why the hell can't that kid stay away from the well? <laughs> you you know, and a better question, why haven't we just built a gate around the well? Yeah, or just cover it up. Uh, and what yeah. happens if Lassie takes a day off? Oh, boy. What's Timmy going to do? Timmy's going to die. A desire to please is hardwired in the Collie's genetic makeup. They're easy to train, but tend to be very noisy. And man, oh man, do they shed. Oh my God. <sighs> like no other. Yeah. And the thing about them is their fur is so beautiful, but it's so long. And yep. oh man. Yep. I don't think I could I could have one of those. I, I definitely could not. Uh, this next one, I had occasion to work with one 
last week at the animal shelter, a Doberman Pinscher. Uh, and I had never, I had never even so, so much as petted a Doberman Pinscher before. This dog was so loving and gentle and loved just being touched. He was very receptive to training. We, we trained the dogs down at the shelter to help them get adopted. Um, he was so smart. Yeah. And he was just a puppy. He was only, they assume him to be between 8 and 12 months old. He was a beautiful, solid, brownish red color. Uh, his ears weren't cropped. I know a lot of times they have, they do some kind of a surgery to make their ears yeah. stand up. He had not had that done. But what a beautiful dog. Um, they have a, they're, they're known as the alert watch dog. They're loving and loyal to their masters. But they do offer a challenge to strangers. Uh, and they can be very intimidating. Oh, for sure. Uh, they are very quick in mind and body. They can become hyperactive if deprived of vigorous exercise every day. Males may be aggressive, and obedience training is absolutely a must. I feel they're a little high strung, Ron. They definitely are. Uh, this one that I worked with, I, I probably worked with him for probably, I don't know, half an hour or so inside the kennel there teaching him tricks, and then we would take a break, and he would just snuggle. He never sat down or laid down the whole time. He stood up. He would not sit down or lay down. That's what I mean, yeah. I had um, an in-law had a, a Doberman, and the dog was so sweet. And I remember one time, I think it was at a Christmas gathering or something or other. You know, I'm like you. Dogs just, they attract to me like a magnet. Right. You know, uh, and, and so this dog did. And I was sitting in this chair, and the dog was, I was petting the dog, and, you know, everything was great. And then I kind of stopped. I was doing something else. The, the Doberman came up, put his his head on my knee like this, and just stared at me. Like, uh, hello. You started petting me. There's, I'm, I'm still here. You're not stopping. Yeah. God. So, yeah, they're... they're they love to cuddle, and they they love to be loved, Dobermans, they yep. do. Next up, the flat-coated retriever. Unsurprisingly, flat-coated retrievers are closely related to their more popular lab counterparts, but they have a longer coat and a leaner silhouette. Bright and eager to please, a flat coat can easily become part of your family, and I believe that. This is a beautiful dog. That's a right nice-looking dog. It is. Uh, next one, this one is very near and dear to my heart. We've had four of these now since my wife and I have been married. The German Shepherd. Uh, loyal, loving, obedient, protective German Shepherds can make wonderful pets if they're properly trained. Uh, most form a very strong emotional bond with their owners. They tend to be high energy and need to be exercised regularly. So this last one we got from a German Shepherd rescue, we named her Brandy. She is very smallish for a German Shepherd. She's about 55 pounds. Uh, she, we call her the pocket shepherd and we're not really sure what, where she came from initially, but she is very wary of meeting people. Um, she's gotten so much better. We've had her since about September and she has made gigantic strides in getting better. But I, I fear that she's always going to be a little bit wary of people. Our last German Shepherd, I could take her anywhere. I didn't have to have her on a leash. She stayed right by my side. Anybody could come up and poke her in the eye or pull her on the tail. She didn't care. She loved it. Did you encourage people to do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, and sometimes with kids, that's just what they do. They, no, go ahead, really. Poke her in the eye. They see this tail wagging she loves it. and it's like, oh, I got that's something to pull on. So. This German Shepherd is going to be, and we're, I work with her every single day. Um, biggest thing you can do with a dog like that that's afraid of people is every time you pass a dog, just reach down and touch them. Mm. And then they get more accustomed to human touch, and they know that humans are good. Because I have a feeling that she thinks that humans are not always that good. Next up, a beautiful dog, a German short-haired pointer. Uh, they're even-tempered and sensible, but their boundless energy can become destructive if they're not given ample time to exercise. They're very intelligent and very trainable. More often than not, this is a one-person dog and so good at hunting, too. Yep. Uh, this next one, we had one of these when I was a baby. 
and uh, it's an Irish setter. So Irish setters, they're natural beauties. Uh, they possess distinctively red fur, much more to them than their gorgeous coat. The hunting dogs are also supreme athletes that love long games of fetch. So my dad named uh, our, our red dog Rusty. And Rusty, according to my mom and everyone who had any contact with it, was as dumb as a box of rocks. That's what I hear. So they're not known for their brilliance, but they are extremely loyal. And apparently Rusty got distemper, and so they oh. had to put Rusty down. But uh, and and then my mom, she never wanted another dog after that. She, you know, you get your heart broken by these dogs. Yeah, they don't live forever. And that's the thing too, as you get older, you know. <sighs> yeah. Do yeah. I want to take on another dog and have it outlive me? Yeah. Uh, which brings us to the next story right here, Golden Retriever. I would love. I had a Golden Retriever back when I was 21 and 22, and he was beautiful. Smartest dog I ever had. Yep. His name was Mr. Thurman. <laughs> and um, one day I was in the house, and, and Mr. Thurman had to go out. So I opened the door, let him out, and I went back in and changed the channel. I look out the back window with a big bay window. And he's at the fence, and he pulled a fence board off the fence. <laughs> and he had the board in his mouth this big. <laughs> And he's walking around, his tail wagging like this, ears up. Proudest moment of the dog's life. Fun, loving, and playful. There's an understatement. Yeah. This family dog loves high-energy activities. They're natural clowns, making them particularly good therapeutic dogs. Because of their high intelligence, they're frequently trained as assistant dogs. And they are. They truly are intelligent. Yeah. I remember that Mr. Thurman um, would block kids from going upstairs. Oh, wow. Toddlers, you know, uh -huh. when we had stairs, if you if the kid was going there, uh, Mr. Thurman would go there and just block. And the kids would try to get by, he wouldn't let them by. Not happening. No. Not on my watch. Nope. <laughs> okay, this next one, also very near and dear to my heart. We have had, uh, we're on our second lab now. My first lab was a working dog when I was with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, the Labrador Retriever. Uh, Family-friendly dogs, non-aggressive, eager to please, and outgoing. They appeal to many people for their gentle ways, intelligence, and adaptability. Uh, Labrador Retriever is the number one registered dog with AKC. So, if you want a dog that everybody else has, get yourself a lab. Yeah, but uh, if you want a dog that has the qualities that a lot of other people want to have. Right, yeah. and, and I think that's the reason they are the number one registered dog. They really, no matter what your lifestyle is, if you want to go for a drive in the car, they want to go for a drive oh, in the yeah, car. Oh, yeah, no doubt. If you want to go for a walk, they want to go for a walk. They want to do whatever it is you want to do. Um, with you. With you. They, and trust me, they get very close to one specific person in your family. Uh, Vicky would tell me a lot of times when I would go to, when I would leave somewhere and, and Dora was my working dog. Dora would be home. She'd sit by the front door and wouldn't move all day. Yeah. She wouldn't eat or drink until I came home. Uh, she was, like, clinically depressed. Mm -hmm. So they do get attached to their people, um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, I think. No. All right, so there you have our list today of uh, some of the best large dog breeds. And uh, if we omitted some of them, uh, we apologize. We, we did a, uh, skip over a few for time. Um, but if you'd like to leave us a comment below and tell us what your favorite large dogs are or any experiences you may have had with large dogs, be they positive or negative, either way, um, we'd love to hear from you. So feel free to uh, drop us a, a, a comment below. And, you know, and honestly, our email addresses, shoot us an email. If you have a picture of your dog, oh yeah, shoot us a picture of your dog. Sure, I'll show I, them. I love dogs. Yeah, I'll show them. We'll do another episode with dogs. I love dogs more than I love people. Well, you love dogs more than you love me. <laughs> that much I know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> See, he doesn't deny it. No. No. All right. Well. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. <laughs> I guess somewhere along the line I've wronged you. Hey, there's a sign right by my front door, and it says, Dogs welcome, people tolerated. Tolerated. Yeah. 
All right, I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. This has been Men Are So Smart Goes to the Dogs. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>